Radville is about five miles to the southeast there. This line of rail was opened by Canadian Northern Railway in July of 1911. Canadian Northern, of course, became part of Canadian National in 1917. Canadian National called this its Bengoff sub, Radville to Willowbunch, 71.5 miles. Looking south down what is likely Range Road 185. The rail line was swapped to Canadian Pacific in December the 19th, 1999. They called it the Radville sub and they issued a notice of abandonment on July 28, 2005. And the rails don't extend much beyond here anymore. It is a chilly Sunday afternoon, January 31st, 2016, and this is Brooking, Saskatchewan. We're on the tip of a deposit of rich moraine, which intrudes onto a vast plain of undifferentiated glacial tilt to the north, west, and east. There were three elevators at one time at Brooking. The far elevator was built in 1911 by Sass Cooperative Elevator Company, which became part of Saskatchewan Pool in the 1920s. The nearer was built by Reliance Grain in 1913 and was merged with the former in 1953. Northern Elevator built in 1929 but it was closed in 1940. It's long gone. Brooking rose to cinematic fame in 1999 when it was chosen as the site for a miniseries based on Maggie Siggins' book Revenge of the Lamb. The series was directed by John N. Smith and starred Jennifer Dale and Kenneth Welsh and The Elevator, which was renamed and painted at least on one side so as to please the cameras. West along probably Township Road number 69. And this is at the west end of the road climbing up onto the moraine. Washing eastbound along the toes of the moraine, this little creek is a contributory to the Long Creek, which in turn flows into the Souris, which flows into the Assiniboia, thence into the Red River and Lake Winnipeg, and the Hudson Bay. That's Canadian National's trestle down there looks to be bereft of rails. And there's just not much left in Brooking. E. E. Lewerton established the post office of Stowe in the store that he ran with his brother on March the 1st, 1911. Changed the name to Brooking on May the 1st, 1911, and it was closed on May 17th. 1961 by Royden Leslie Wallen. Brooking was incorporated as a village on January the 3rd, 1912, but it was disorganized on April the 15th, 1917. It's now a ward of the RM of the Gap, number 39. There used to be two stores in Brooking, a butcher shop, a cafe, lumberyard, livery stables, a hotel, machinery dealers, a pool room, dance hall, Buffalo Valley School, blacksmith shop run by Bill Leonard. Now it's just a grain field, mostly. It'd be interesting to bring my friend Bob Yee out here with his metal detector and see what we could find. say the first concrete bridge constructed in Saskatchewan was located at Brooking, but I found no evidence of that.
Scotch and Weep will close the elevator in 1972. The station, a third-class edifice built by Canadian Northern in 1913, stood just to the east of the elevator in there at mile 5.7 from Radville. It was sold off in 1964. And this industry augments the agricultural industry in this area you now. Slowly dragging up some oil. And cleaning out some old wells, it looks like. As well, Brooking is blessed with sand and gravel. A gift of the glaciers, which were treated out of this area some 11,000 years ago. Walter. Lori Walter? Yeah. Pleased to meet you, ma'am. I'm up to do my chores, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. In the summertime, from time to time, yeah. it's very scenic. Well, in warmer weather, I'll just have to come back to Brooking, Saskatchewan.